When I talk about squats, all I'm talking about is I'm bending at the hip, the knee, and the ankle at the same time. Just like this. But you know what else that looks like? It looks like a lunge. It's the same kind of thing. It's a little bit different, but it's pretty much the same kind of thing. Similar musculature, though the activation is different, the same stuff is getting involved. So what I wanna to do today is talk through some of the differences here. In a bilateral squat, I'm using two feet. That's what the bilateral comes from. Unilateral, one leg, bilateral, two leg. In a bilateral squat, my base of support is really wide. Depending on how wide I want to take my stance, I have greater ability to control my center of mass. And that center of mass is dictated both by the positions that I adopt while I'm doing this lift and the ones that I'm able to maintain. It's, uh, it's determined by stiffness in hips, it's determined by sensitivity of your nervous system, and it's determined by the load that is on top of you, right? If I have a barbell on the front of my body, I'm gonna adopt a different position than if I have a barbell on the back of my body. Okay, so all this stuff comes into play. With the bilateral squat, since the base of support is really wide, the stability demands are much lower. I don't need so much balance. There aren't many people who are going to fall over when they're standing on two legs. Unless you have some sort of uh, vestibular proprioceptive uh, problems, you're probably not gonna run into many issues with balance when you're on two legs. The problems come when you shift onto one and when you move over to the next and the interplay between those two. So a bilateral squat doesn't have very strong stability demands, okay? I get stability from the position. So what I can do then is I can demonstrate more force, more power, more speed, more strength. Okay, I can use heavier weights and I can train this force production capability of my body, right? I'm not going to single leg squat 225, but I can body weight squat to, or I can barbell squat 225. So stability demands are the major, major difference. Second biggest difference is just the joint positions that are required from bilateral squatting. So. The hip has more motion when I bring it this, let me, so I'm gonna keep it in line and I'm gonna bring it as high as I can without moving my entire body. Okay, that's about as high as I can go. It's maybe a hundred degrees of hip flexion, just like this. I'm gonna try to do this again, not compensate at my other leg and just pull it up as high as I can. That's as far as I wanna go. I'm getting a little pinch in my hip. I'm getting that muscles getting really tight. It's telling me that I'm at my limit. Now, let's say I move my hip outward. So I'm gonna pull up. My balance is really good today. You guys are lucky. And then I'm gonna pull my hip out. And you see how now it comes out more, it comes up more. Okay, I'm up as high as I can go. And now let me just translate this over and then bring it up as high as I can. Look at that. So that's active motion. That's the hardest motion to demonstrate, right? This would be passive because gravity is forcing me into that position. This is active because I'm pulling my hip into that position. Now, what's going on? So the shape of the hip joint is not consistent. It's not just a circle and a ball is in the circle. It's kind of like a half moon and it's chiseled out in some areas and I get blocked when I go this way, but I don't get this bony block when I'm here. This is actually much more relieving for those. That pinching in the hip that I was telling you I was feeling, I feel it here, but I don't feel it here. That's because the position of the hip joint is different. I now have more mobility this way. Okay, so this, outside position is a lot like this squatting position. And so I can get more squat depth more easily, not just because I have a bilateral stance and I have a lot of stability, but because the hip joint is in a position where it can demonstrate more mobility. So if you're looking to train 
at depths without uh, without emphasizing or without increasing your your flexibility you might want to try doing some sort of bilateral lift as well okay hopefully that kind of makes sense that one that one's a grayer area right much more gray than i can just do more weight right so next so we talked about using more load and the stability demands we talked about the joint positions that are um, achieved in a bilateral squat. Now let's look at this from the unilateral squat, from the, let's say, split squat position here. So one foot is forward, one foot is back. It's like a lunging position, but I'm not moving my feet. I'm still doing a squat pattern, but it's mostly on one leg. It's mostly on this front leg. As long as I keep my weight kind of forward a little bit, I can load this front leg more. If I try to stay back, I'll load the back leg more, and it doesn't feel right. So Try to bias yourself into loading the front leg just slightly, okay? What is going on here? Well, now, instead of having my knee out like this, as long as I'm not cueing my knee out like this, I'm gonna have harder time getting into the mobility, right? I'm not gonna have as much mobility. I'm not gonna be able to squat so deeply that way, unless I'm really flexible, which sometimes some people are. Um, it's just going to demand more control. Okay, so if we go in order, just like last time, right? Lots of stability, less stability. In fact, not that much stability. If my base of support is the width of both of my feet here, and the, uh, you know, accompanying the difference between them, or the distance between them, this base of support is just one foot. <laughs> If I put this back foot down, I get a little bit more stability. So if we talk about a pistol squat, I have almost none. I have one foot size, and my foot's pretty small, so I don't have that much stability. But if I put this other foot down, then I have somewhere in between having one foot up in the air and having both feet down on the ground. Okay, so now you're starting to see we can place these things on a continuum, right? This squat progression, we can look at from different ways. I can look at, I can progress to a bilateral squat to use more load, or I can progress to a split squat or a pistol squat to demonstrate more mobility under load, to oppose gravity with more mobility. Okay, so we talked about load. We talked about these positions. Now, the, the, the next thing that I want to talk about, so I mentioned there are similar muscles active in these patterns, but they're not active to the same degree. So when I'm here and I shift my weight a little bit more forward, maybe I'm 60, 40 front to back. Okay, as I come down, I need a lot more lateral glute outside hip muscle here to support myself because if I shut it off, then my, my hip collapses outward and the opposite side of my body falls down like this, okay? And you'll see some people will do this this way. They'll be really, I might say, over-lateralized. They're over to one side too much. And I might need to cue you, hey, push through that foot. And I'm, I'm serious, I'm doing this right now and it's pushing this back to the midline. It's keeping me in line. Okay, so there is this not only narrower base of support, but there is a different stability demand. The synergistic muscles that help you accomplish this movement, like the gluteus medius, is much more active when I'm preferentially loading one leg rather than both. Because I don't need glute med here so much. It's gonna help push me up together when they both work together. But this way, it's gonna keep me from falling, okay? So I get a little bit out of it here, and I get a lot out of it here, right? Off, on. So again, even though they're active in both squatting variations, I'm loading this a lot more. So when I take myself to train with unilateral type movements, whether that be a reverse lunge, whether that be a forward lunge, or whether that just be, be the split squat we've been talking about, or like a pistol squat, like we were kind of talking about earlier. The, the emphasis gets placed more on the synergistic, the supporting musculature. So if you need supporting musculature, 
and you might, and a lot of people do, then maybe you need to spend a little bit more time in this unilateral area. But if you're just new to lifting and you're totally weak and you're trying to learn how to squat, a bilateral squat is a good place to start. Let's say you've been training for a year, you've been doing a 5x5 five five program you found on the internet, and you've been doing this a lot. And this is your goal. You want to squat more. Well, I think you should still spend some time here. Because this supporting musculature will keep your body together. It'll keep you in those positions that uh, allow you to demonstrate your abilities. So when I squat, if I lose my hip position like this and I stick my butt way out, that shuts my glute off because it stretches it really long and it can't contract. It's passive, right? But if I know the way to not shut it off, I know the way to turn it on because I trained myself in these unilateral variations where it's really stressed, then I can take that over to my main lifts, the lifts that I'm testing, the lifts that I'm trying to improve, and I can get this carryover training effect from an exercise that is kind of unrelated, not the same, but kind of still related, an assistance exercise. So those are some of the many, many differences. Bilateral squats, good for using more weight. You have more stability in the exercise itself. Unilateral squats are really good for emphasizing synergistic movements. They're uh, good for or muscles, synergistic muscles, and they're good for emphasizing balance and for teaching your body to control mobility and for demanding more from your, your positions and from your motor control. Hope that helps. If there's anything I missed, leave a comment below or just ask your question and we can have a discussion.